please have your seat. Leader Chairman of Progressive Governors Group and the Chairman of our party. Aleko, you are in Kapsan today. Therefore, I came to my shoe. But very, very glad to see all of you. I'm very glad before all the governors present here. But respectfully, by to you, the private sector, the engine of growth. All the protocols has been observed and the policies extended to all of you. Thank you. Thank you for being here to listen. All it is for a praise of what we are going to be able to talk about. But the journey is a winding and the road is slippery when wet. Nigeria stands at the threshold between indifference and greatness, prosperity and poverty, the future and the past. The door is ajar. Together let us open it so that we may cross over to the better side and secure for this beloved nation is finer and it is finest destiny. The productive and the beneficial thing we seek to do lie in the sole domain of one sector. They reside in the cooperation between government and the private sector. I see no conflict between the business community and government. Yet, with equal conviction, I believe the private sector and government should constantly be at war. But, the way it did back to not as enemies. They must stand as inseparable allies, combating the mutual enemies of scarcity, underdevelopment, joblessness, and fear. This bad thing breed. For this reason, to join you in this battle, I am honored to meet with you, the leaders, the business community, and private sector. Lagos is an appropriate venue to do it. You may have heard that I was once a governor of this state, if you didn't know before. <laughs> I was once governor. May I remind you that when I first entered office, Lagos was a different story. I listened to the current governor. Mr. Babajide Sanwolu, I feel thrilled 
I thought my day was made. I don't have to. I don't have to address you again. He said it all. My team and I developed a blueprint, a master plan for Lagos. I can say that plan has been largely successful. We turned this state into a safer, more prosperous place where people can go about and about any legitimate vocation or venture, regardless of their ethnicity, religion, region, or prior social status. We did more than open Lagos for business. We opened the door for all Nigerians to join and experience the recent things progressive democratic governance can bring. We were not perfect, but we did a lot. In doing so, we work hand in hand with the business community as partners, sharing the same goal of prosperity and renewed hope. Well, as you might have heard at some point recently, I now stand before you seeking a bigger yet similar job. The pragmatic problem solving and the teamwork, unbreakable teamwork that improves Lagos is what I want to bring to the nation. I ask you to help as the task ahead is doable but difficult. Here yeah, I will say something that captures the essence of our economic challenge. Each of us has the voice. This belief before in various ways and you own your words. Each time I say or oh, hear it, I become humbled by the enormity of what we face. Yet, I'm also inspired that we can surmount this great challenge. From its very inception, our political economy has been imbalanced and in need of major reform. Our political economy is much too dependent on the export of raw materials or on finished goods and the import of increasingly expensive finished products. Over the course of the time, gains from natural resource exports will prove largely insufficient to meet the rising cost of imports, let alone support even the most basic demand of modern democratic governance. The time is now to cure this lack. It's a disease. We must cure it. And time is of essence for it does not wait, wait for any man or nation. We commend the work of a prior administration, especially the present government. They did their best. The government has performed with the patriotism 
and commitment during trying times. If you don't know it was trying time, I know. And many Nigerians know. But we simply must go further and faster. My experiences in both private sector and elective office afford me a special appreciation of economic potency that close collaboration between government and the business community can bring. Allow me to share a few ideas that provide some insight into my vision for a more prosperous and secure nation where hope is renewed and despair is rebuffed. Well, regular dialogue. All Nigeria must invested in a better future. We must maintain the channels and spirit of respectful and productive dialogue. At the same time, at times, what I say may help you. Other times, what you say may enlighten me. I must listen. We must always talk and confer with the best of intentions, just as this open door policy is with me before the election. I shall continue to honor it, and after the election, I will continue to respect it. To revive the industry, yes, we have to. We shall bring the nation's industrial policy to life. Key to this is our aim to create major and minor industrial hubs in each of our geographical zones. We created this geographical zone artificially so that we can communicate and grow faster from bottom up. We shall not be satisfied by bolstering traditional sectors. We will foster pro pr productive excellence in new areas such as light manufacturing, and Nollywood entertainment sector through active participation in digital economy. We shall make Nigeria a leader instead of a bystander. This is in the fourth, in the fourth industrial revolution. We must target, and we will, I assure you, target growth at very least. We must achieve GDP growth of minimum 6%, if not 10% per annum. Promote agriculture. We shall continue to press reforms in the sector that will increase productivity, improve farm incomes while lowering food prices, and bring enough food to the table of ordinary people. Power. Nigeria, I am determined. They are Nigerians. 
I am determined, I repeat, to give you the affordable and reliable power you need to drive your businesses in a way that lifts the entire economy and ordinary person. We must produce. We cannot produce without constant electricity. It's crucial. And we have what it takes to bring this electricity to you all. We have the gas. We have the sun. We have the wind. We have the water. What are we waiting for? Therefore, we must produce and buy. We must produce. Please note, then buy Nigeria. We seek a consumer credit revolution. Work in concert with the banking industry. And I saw many of you here. I am excited. Very, very happy indeed. Led by the CBN, we must establish affordable credit that enables the purchase of more cars made in Nigeria. The construction of more homes built in Nigeria. Bring the money home. The standard of living rise and strengthens the business sector shall increase in so many folds. Build Nigeria. We must continue with the expansion of infrastructure commenced by the current government. From our roads and ports, you've lands of the deep sea port. It took a while. It took strong determination and perseverance. For me, standing before you here, to start the dream and realize the goal of that seaport. <clears throat> Continue the expansion of the infrastructure. Land and water management. All catchment area must be studied, studied to stem humanitarian and economic tragedy feasted on us by seasonal flood. Do we need a back-to-back -back channelization? Do we need dredging? Regular. We need secondary and primary drainage system, we need reticulation of our farmland. I have saved the most single important point for last. May I conclude with my thought on security. We shall continue to fight against insecurity by redefining our counterinsurgency doctrine and practice our response to terror, kidnapping, and violent criminality will be defined 
by the following elements. We shall enlist more people in the armed forces, security services, and the police. Our forces shall be given better tactical communication mobility as well as improved area and ground surveillance capacity. Through this and other measures, we shall identify, monitor, track, and defeat the evil groups where they are anywhere small inch of our land. We shall have no respite until they surrender or are utterly, ultimately defeated. <laughs> what I've shared today is a brief overview of some thoughts on how to improve and protect our beloved nation. Town Shami Town Hall meeting is but first of many sessions I would like to hold with you, the business community. Since you came as a group, I came as a member of your team. My esteemed and exceptionally able running mate, Shetima Kazim, will share his thought on key aspects of our action plan. We will be followed by others who represent our now and tomorrow. You think young, you build young, you develop future leadership, you make a tomorrow better than today because of your faith and their capacity to dream, wonder, and believe that a nation is not driven by itself but the content and the people who resides in it, who will not be satisfied with the average standard of living. A nation like Nigeria, the giant of Africa, it will move, crush all enemies, bring progress and prosperity for us today and tomorrow. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Keep